to the White Lotus in Sicily. La Dolce Vita. To a man who doesn't want trouble, you keep interesting company. When I ask something of you, you will do it. Or this place will burn. Je peux pas me permettre d'improviser. Je laisse ça aux amateurs. Mon flingue perso de pinball. Comme ça, si ça dégénère, ils seront tout assez. J'entends. From Apple TV's latest show about an escaped prisoner seeking redemption in India to a new Netflix horror just in time for Halloween, it's another rich and diverse month in the world of television. And Diptyko Laurent, our TV critic, is here to take us through it all. Hi, Deepti. Hi, Olivia. Now, we're starting with a critically acclaimed series the first time around. It's back for a second season. That's HBO's The White Lotus. Tell us more. That's right. The White Lotus, uh, the first season at least, was a darkly comedic murder mystery uh, and, and also very biting commentary about rich white people and their first world problems. It picked up 10 Emmys last month, uh, including Best Supporting Roles for Jennifer Coolidge, who plays a neurotic guest, and Mari Bartlett, who plays the drug-addled head of Hotel. It says a lot about the strength of the cast in the first season because eight cast members were nominated for Best Supporting Roles. Season one took us to Hawaii. Season two takes us to La Dolce Vita, Olivia, in Sicily, in Italy. Oh, sounds suitably luxurious. Well, let's take a look then at The White Lotus, season two. It's been a series of very bad decisions. We've had very bad luck. The best thing about luck is it can always change. so romantic. You're gonna die. They're gonna have to drag you out of here. So unfortunately, the screeners were not available in time for taping the show, but we can talk about casting and the setting. So it's set at the Four Seasons Domenico Hotel in Taormina in Sicily, a very luxurious. Very glam. Uh, it's mostly a new cast, as I said, except for Jennifer Coolidge, who reprises her role from season one. This time she comes with her new husband, Greg, who she actually met in the first season. <laughs> and she brings along her assistant for some reason. Um, the new cast also includes Aubrey Plaza from Parks and Recreation and Michael Imperioli from Goodfellas and, of course, the Sopranos. Wow, so, welcome uh, return for him. Exactly. So a very strong cast going to the second season. The creator of the show, Mike White, he was a producer on shows like Dawson's Creek in the 90s uh, and Freaks and Geeks. He added authenticity to this season. 20% of the dialogue is in Italian and it also features Italian actors. So season one was really about the colonial history of Hawaii, um, racism, the power dynamics between guests and staff. Season two begins uh, with a murder mystery like the first season, but uh, appears to focus more on sexual politics and sexual deviance. The big question, of course, will be, can it live up to the magic of its now Emmy award-winning first season? Mm, high hopes there, then. Well, we're going from a Sicilian paradise to the underbelly of Mumbai for Apple TV's uh, latest show. Shantaram is based on the memoir of an Australian criminal who escapes from prison and ends up in India. Yeah, it's a pretty incredible story. Shantaram, the series, was based on the nearly 1,000-page book by Gregory David Roberts that was released in 2003. It's a loosely autobiographical story of a man named Lindsay who escapes from prison in, in Australia and ends up uh, in the criminal poverty-stricken underbelly of Mumbai. This is a project that's nearly 20 years in the making. Hollywood never quite figured out what format they wanted to do this in. There were talks of a movie, aborted productions with uh, Russell Crowe, Joel Edgerton, um, Johnny Depp even tipped mm. to play the main character. In the end, it landed in the lap of Apple TV's, um, of Apple TV Plus and um, seems like meaty content uh, that's perfect for the platform that uh, really has developed a reputation for edgy, hard-hitting dramas. Um, I'm thinking of, you know, Blackbird, which we talked about on this show um, a couple of months ago. A British actor, Charlie Hunnam, uh, who you'll recognize from Sons of Anarchy, he plays the lead character, Lindsay. Take a look. I was a wanted man with a price on my head. But for now, I was free. Lynn Ford is just like you or I. I mean, it was very important to me in this first season that he feel very neutral and accessible and sort of like he was just on the beginning of his journey. I was on the run with no home and no country. Bombay was a place where everyone started new. I was mainly um, speaking Marathi, um, which is the 
prevalent dialect of Mumbai, um, particularly Bombay in the 80s when we were shooting. Don't ask me to repeat any of it oh, now because I've you. forgotten all of it. But I, I, I have heard that I did OK literally listening to it and then sort of parroting it back. You can be free of anything but yourself. I guess I need to be running towards something. Now, Shantaram was a real cult book. I remember everyone seemed to be reading it at the time. And this is not really an eat, love, pray style journey to India, <laughs> although there is a, the themes of redemption, finding yourself. What did you make of the series? Look, I was worried uh, first and foremost about the fetishing it's of Indian society, time. as is often sort of a trap. And it's there is a, a little bit of that, you know, this hardened Chelsea criminal, but, you know, well-meaning criminal seeking redemption and, and the righteous path and the spirituality of India. Um, as an Aussie, I, I take issue with Charlie Hunnam's Aussie accent. It's a valiant <laughs> attempt, Olivia. And you hear a lot of it because there's a constant voice of a narration throughout the series. But it's jarring and it's weirdly melodic in its delivery and it sort of sometimes detracts uh, from the content of the show. Um, there's also a lot of lofty dialogue about finding yourself and some cliched romantic art arcs, a bit of cheesy phrases. And look, to his credit, Charlie Hunnam is very handsome, but he's perhaps too handsome uh, for this show. <laughs> <laughs> OK, it sounds like you're not quite sure then. Should we stream it or skip it? Look, stream it if you're patient enough to sit through the 12 one-hour-long episodes. Um, stream it if you love, you know, cinematic visual content because... You know, it's it's gorgeous to watch. Uh, and I stream it if you love Hanum. He's a, he's a very strong, charismatic lead. Props to him. He spoke about it in, in uh, that clip we saw before about speaking Marathi. He, he really made an effort to do that. Uh, but the show is also meandering. It's terribly long. Um, uh, and apart from Shubham Saraf, who plays Lin's sort of um, loyal slum guide sidekick, not a lot of the main cast is actually authentically Indian. Uh, and it must be noted that due to the pandemic in India, the show wasn't even really filmed, wasn't even filmed in India. It had to be relocated okay. to Thailand. Obviously, you know, unforeseen circumstances, but it does not bode well for the authenticity of the show. Mm, pretty difficult to recreate Mumbai, I'm sure. Now, we're going to a French dramedy next. It's drama plus comedy from Disney+. Plus. It's called Les Amateurs. It focuses on crime. It's about two bumbling fools who stumble into a criminal plot in a quaint eastern French town. Tell us more. Well, if that might seem very familiar to you if you know uh, the 2013 show The Wrong Man's uh, starring James Corden because Les Amateurs Disney Plus's new French show is actually a remake of that 2013 British show The Wrong Man's. Uh, Les Amateurs follows the adventures of uh, Vincent and Albon who work for a regional government department in eastern France. Not a lot going for them in their lives. Uh, Albon is played by the legendary Belgian comedian François Damiens. He's in his 40s. He still lives at home. Uh, Vincent, played by the French actor Vincent Dédien, um, has just been dumped by his girlfriend, and who, who was also, incidentally, his boss. Uh, he answers an abandoned telephone ringing at the site of a car accident that he's just witnessed, and that phone call will catapult the pair into uh, the hapless pair, into a dangerous criminal plot. Well, sounds intriguing and fun. Now, Deep Tea, your counterpart uh, on the French television channel of France 24, Nina Masson, who's also the TV critic, met up with the actors from the show. Take a look. Il veut dire branque, il veut dire que nos personnages sont des des gens qui ne se débrouillent pas très bien avec la vie, qui ne sont pas des sont pas des héros quoi. Je peux pas me permettre d'improviser. Je laisse ça aux amateurs. Mon flingue perso de pinball. Comme ça, si ça dégénère, ils seront tout tachés. J'entends. On a des petites vies plan plan et puis on se retrouve au milieu d'un la mafia, malgré nous, on n'est pas équipé. On a de la tendresse pour eux, je trouve qu'on a envie qu'ils qu qu s'en sortent et qu'ils mm. qu sont volontaires, ils sont... Mm. Ils... Bah oui, c'est des grands enfants, quoi. Mm. François Damien, they're always pretty good with some physical comedy, quite entertaining. Deepti, what did you think of this one? Well, it's interesting because when you look at the trailer, uh, you get the impression that the show is just one farcical scene after another, but there are actually some dark moments, some sort of dra drama, mo dramatic moments. Uh, Vincent Dédien and François Damien um, have great chemistry together. There's a really nice pairing of the sort of passive, uh, lost guy with Damien, sort of uh, guns a-blazing um, kind of guy. It's, it's good. It's not a great, it's not a groundbreaking show. And, and, and personally, and just personally, I'm not a huge fan of this kind of French farcical comedy. But the show is uh, watchable. It's uh, enjoyable, certainly for a French audience who are already familiar with 
uh, Vincent Dédien and François Damiens. It's also very bingeable, and that is important in the world of streaming. The series is made up of six half-hour episodes, so you can definitely watch this over a weekend, for instance. Yeah, it does seem comparatively short, actually. Now, Halloween is uh, almost upon us, and that means that the horror genre is in no short supply on our screens. Now, one show has caught your fancy. That comes from Netflix, Cabinet of Curiosities, and this comes from Oscar-winning director Guillermo del Toro. That's right, it's an eight-page anthology series uh, out uh, really just before Halloween. Each episode is a standalone series and it challenges the traditional perceptions of the horror genre, um, uh, Olivia. Uh, it's interesting to note that two episodes will be dropped per day over four days, so the streaming platform is definitely experimenting with new ways of dropping shows. Um, kind dosing of, it a bit. Yeah, dosing it instead of uh, dropping it all in one whole binge. I wasn't able to preview the series at the time of filming this show, but the trailer offers plenty of clues about uh, what kind of stories will be told. You see, for instance, rats that could um, allude to graveyard rats and a tube of paint that could uh, refer to Pickman's model, one of two stories by H.P. Lovecraft that is being adapted for this series. It's a must-see for fans of the horror genre. Okay. Yeah, indeed, and it's probably time for an update as well. Who better to do it than Guillermo del Toro? Exactly. DT, thank you so much for that roundup today of the latest shows. We'll leave you with a glimpse of that cabinet of curiosities available on Netflix from October 25th. But for more arts and culture, do check out our website, of course, and our social media. There's more news coming up on France 24 just after this. You are really harshing my mellow, man. Ah! They come. That body will be your coffin. I'll see you buried in it. Welcome. Welcome. Welcome to my cabinet of curiosities.